Yes, virtual reality seems like such a retro concept, like it's held up in the 1980s, but it's coming back and very big companies are investing in it. Uh, Facebook have invested in a company called Oculus, who've been building virtual reality headsets for a while. And this week, uh, Samsung have teamed up with them as well to actually produce a mobile phone that you can sit in a virtual reality headset and treat as a virtual reality headset. Uh, now, Nick Ross, uh, who is the editor of the ABC's Games and Technology website, you've actually played with this. Tell me, how did it feel? Um, it's really good. And that surprised me. I think it surprised a whole bunch of tech journos on the night um, that it was shown off to us. On the same day, I played with the actual new Oculus um, headset as well. And um, the potential here is huge. Um, if you can't figure out why you'd like it yet, you've got to remember this is, again, a platform. And what's really going to be interesting is the things people use it for. Personally, I think the killer feature for it is going to be, or one of them anyway, is Minecraft because um, that is already a kind of virtual digital Lego that lets people build things, design things, and make other games and movies. And it doesn't require that much power, so it can easily run off a phone. So you, you're straight away able to be in a digital environment, building stuff, communicating with others, making games, participating in games in total virtual reality, and it's going to work. It's going to be amazing when that happens. Carolee, how do you envisage this could work in an advertising space? The problem with e-commerce at the moment is you don't get to touch or feel or experience things. So there's still that disconnect between what you're buying online and, and what you're buying physically. And for me, my mind really went to, um, you know, any experience-based um, products. Like you can imagine before you buy a holiday, actually experiencing the holiday. Um, you can imagine before buying a car, which is really expensive, um, using this to go and, and do virtual test drives and, and actually putting those cars into games. And that's where that sort of native advertising as well as experience advertising really comes in for me. It struck me that the one big difference between what this offers and what the standard Oculus headset offer is that this actually has, being a mobile phone, a camera in it. So it opens up this whole world of things like augmented reality mm. where it could potentially use the camera plus a virtual reality uh, environment over the top of it. What are the sorts of things you would most like to see beyond the world of games, Nick? I think a good place to look here is uh, Star Trek and uh, the holodecks. There <laughs> I love because... you've done Battlestar Galactica, Star right, Trek. I'll try Let's... and get the lot in. Now, in terms of game designers, Nick, how much more difficult does their job become if they have to manage uh, a virtual uh, environment on top of all the additional mechanics of gameplay? Well, they don't really because they're already making virtual environments and really what you see in a, when you're playing a game is one camera's point of view. Um, with uh, Oculus, you, I think you've basically got two cameras, a 3D style sort of thing. So all you've got is offsetting, but that, that kind of doubles up on processing. But um, as with the we've seen with the actual hardcore Oculus headset, which is designed... Um, basically to be attached to a PC, so it does have that sort of power, we're going to be getting some pretty hardcore 3D games mm. um, using the sort of games that we've already got. So you have Call of Duty and the likes of that playing in 3D, and I've already seen tech demos on it, and I was sceptical, I'm not now. It's going to look absolutely amazing. When you see those rockets coming towards you, you want to move. The virtual reality hasn't really been like a consumer product for a while. Do you think introducing it in the context of a phone plus an attachment is going to help push it into the consumer yeah, space? Yeah, absolutely, because I think, you know, it's still got this problem of price point and it's still got a problem of multiple uses. Um, it is and has been very much associated with just gaming, so I think that limits the, the broader consumer need. Um, so I think once you once you sort of lower the price point and, and actually having it, you know, connect connected to a phone, which you've, you've already got anyway. Um, I think this is probably something that will help kick it over. We should probably mention uh, that Samsung's not alone here. Google are also doing one. Um, they call Google Cardboard, uh, which is instead of having the posh kind of comfy headset, they got one that you make out of a cardboard box. What they're doing there is... Um, for their demos is they're using kind of 3D panoramas of big landscapes and everything, and it's kind of like um, an exotic postcard in a way, but it does feel like you're there, and that, that kind of travel without travelling, I guess, is going to be a big one. What would it take for you, Carolee, to recommend to clients that virtual reality is a space they should be playing in? Numbers. Numbers? So when we're constantly making decisions for reach and, and, you know, looking at TV versus digital versus social, the numbers for virtual reality in terms of being able to communicate to 
a number of people are just not there. But, um, you know, if they were there and starting to tip over, um, absolutely, that would be the only thing it would take for me to raise an argument. You've got one other thing there as well. Um, here's a great opportunity for kind of um, vendors and clients of yours maybe to actually get in early and do the definitive tech demos for yeah. new 3D virtual reality type stuff because that, that way all the early birds will be writing about it and that will get an awful lot of press just for doing it. So they'll push everything along, invest in it and get an awful lot of coverage too because uh, that sort of viral marketing could do very, yeah, very absolutely. well. All right, that is just one slice of the future of virtual reality. There's lots of different products out there. Let us know, what is the one that you are most interested in trying out and certainly would you try this one uh, let us know down in the comment sections below we have been very much enjoying your responses over the last couple of weeks some of them have been very very funny we're actually going to start reading them out next week so don't put any swearing in them because i don't want to have to swear on the abc uh, and as always subscribe somewhere on this screen right now i never understand where it is there is a subscribe button and you should hit it right now for all of the amazing content that rn produce thanks guys <laughs>